The 1960s was a time of mass innovation. Back then, labor unions were much stronger, meaning that working class people had bargaining power and money in their pockets. Antitrust laws were also much stronger, meaning that businesses could not buy each other out at the same scale we see today. As a result, it should be no surprise that economic competitiveness and innovation were at all-time highs, with the average working-class European being among the best-off people in the world. This innovation can be seen in cars of the time period, like the Rover P6 with its powerful gas turbine engine. However, attempts to innovate do not always result in success stories, and nobody knows that better than the Chevrolet engineers who designed the Corvair. When the Corvair was released in 1959, it received nothing but the highest praise from critics and customers alike. The vehicle was an attempt to compete with the Volkswagen Beetle, and thus it shared many similarities with the Bug. For example, both cars used rear-engined layouts. They also both used horizontally opposed engines, much like the ones that Subaru uses. The Corvair, however, packed noticeably more punch than the Beetle. While both cars were in the same price range, the Corvair's performance lined up more closely to that of a Porsche of the same time period, leading many to refer to it as, quote, a poor man's Porsche, unquote. The vehicle's unique styling also attracted buyers. It's easy to see why the vehicle was so beloved at first. A Porsche-like sports car that you could buy for the price of a Beetle seemed too good to be true. With this car, Chevrolet was confident that they could make motoring history. As soon as Corvair started selling, accidents started rolling in. The car's rear engine placement made it notoriously back heavy, inducing undesirable amounts of oversteer. This was not helped by the vehicle's trailing arm rear suspension, which was prone to tucking in. Oftentimes, the vehicle would spin out, and in some cases even flip over as a result of the weight distribution and suspension design. As reports of crashes detailing those issues started rolling in, Chevrolet responded by announcing that the Corvair's tire pressure had to be extremely uneven for the car to be driven safely. This, however, only lessened the issue. When it became obvious that this wasn't working, Chevrolet made a new Corvair with fully independent suspension. The new suspension fixed the tendency for the wheels to tuck in, but the Corvairs continued to have issues with oversteer and crash safety. A particularly notorious accident in which comedian Eddie Kovacs was killed, along with Ralph Nader's book Unsafe at Any Speed, helped to crush public confidence in the car's safety. While Chevrolet did attempt to fix most of the addressed issues with the car, there was one issue that they never touched, and that was crash protection. In the event of a crash, the car's back heavy weight distribution became its enemy as the engine's weight pushed the car's rear end forward. This regularly resulted in the immediate annihilation of anything in the passenger cabin, which took all the force of the impact. While many people are angry with Ralph, and even go as far as to accuse him of being wrong or lying, he was undoubtedly the hero in this story, because he and his team helped set the standards for auto safety in the following years, undoubtedly saving lives and making your driving experience safer. To put it simply, the Corvair had indeed made motoring history, but for all the wrong reasons. Chevrolet tried desperately to fix the damage, even going as far as to demonstrate the Corvair's new suspension with tests done by professional racing drivers. Despite their efforts, sales plummeted, and in 1969, Chevrolet finally pulled the plug on the car. But, if you were to ask me about this car, I'd call it a success story. 
Why, after everything I just pointed out? Because even after all of those failures, the Chevrolet Corvair still has a dedicated fan community of people who see the car as a gift. People who love it no matter the circumstance. And if you can make your product fail so badly and still have people who dedicate themselves to it, then that's a success story if I ever heard one.